be red, rain down, Holy Spirit, rain down, rain down, oh comforter and friend, how we need your touch again. Holy Spirit, rain down, rain down. Who will fall? Let your voice be heard as we change our hearts, as we stand on your word. Holy Spirit, rain down. Amen. 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 I'm trying to just sing a few songs, get a minutes of time to get ready. Amen. Amen. I believe he's he's in the building or getting close. Amen. So y'all just keep him in your prayers. Amen. Keep me in your prayers. And I'm just trying to keep things moving. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Mercy rewrote my life. Oh, mercy rewrote my life. I should have fallen my soul cast down but mercy rewrote my life oh mercy rewrote my life Mercy rewrote my life. I should have Amen. Yes. God's mercy rewrote. Oh, it was mercy rewrote my life. Oh, mercy rewrote my life. I should have fallen. My soul cast down, oh, mercy, rewrote. Oh, thank you, Lord. It was mercy, rewrote my life, oh, mercy. Mercy rewrote my life. I should have fallen, my soul cast down. Mercy rewrote. My soul says yes, 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 my Lord, my soul says yes, yes, oh, my soul says yes, 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 my Lord, my soul says yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, in the morning, yes, 
Oh, yes. Amen. Yes, my Lord, in the morning, yes. Oh, yes. Yes. In the evening, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. My Lord, in the evening, yes. Yes, yes. My soul says yes. Yes, yes. Oh, yes. My Lord, my soul says yes. Yes, yes. Oh, my soul says yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes. So say yes. Oh yes. Oh, what a mighty God! What a mighty God we serve! Oh, what a mighty God we serve! Oh, heaven and for Him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, what a mighty, what a, oh, we, oh, what a mighty God, what a mighty God we serve. Oh, yeah, the angels. Oh, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, we're together again. Just praising the Lord. Yes, we're together again. With one accord. Something good is going to happen. Good is in store. We're together again. Just praising the Lord. Oh, we're together again. Just praising the Lord. We're together again. With one accord, something good is going to, hallelujah, good is in store. We're together again, just praising the Lord. Oh, we're together again. One more time. Just praising the Lord. We're together again with one accord. Something good. Hallelujah. Good is in store. We're together again. Praising the Lord. Amen. 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 If we this time we just call our pastor on up. Amen. Looking forward to a wonderful service. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Amen. Yes, amen. God bless you. You can be seated. Amen. Let me just get uh, the announcements there for tonight. Well, it's good to be back in the house of the Lord. Uh, once more, and uh, I was contemplating whether we would have this service tonight after such a weekend. <laughs> uh, but uh, when I, I was talking to Brother Lee and realized that he didn't fly home until tomorrow, and I'm like, well, my, if he's going to be here that long, we need to have a service and we need to have Brother Lee preach for us. Uh, his first time uh, in the U.S., and uh, he came for um, these um, the meetings. The, um, uh, his wife, precious wife, two daughters, some of the saints from the church, uh, you know, came along with them. And we're so happy to have you all with us. Amen. On tonight. 
Amen. Uh, so I won't take too much time. I'll just go through the announcements and that way we'll have Brother Lee come uh, shortly. Uh, so Sunday, don't forget, we'll have a prayer from 9 to 10 and then the service will start at 1030. Uh, Sunday school um, from 930 to 10 uh, for our youth and young adults. And our streaming continues through Twitter, Facebook, <coughs> and our church website. I wanted to make mention that um, so we, we streamed the night of worship um, and uh, the service on Sunday. And that is currently on, uh, you can find it on, on our Facebook channel, SAT Tabernacle. However, over the weekend, we will be um, kind of taking it down temporarily. The, the brothers want to make some edits to the video in order to improve uh, just the quality of it. And, uh, you know, so they asked that we just kind of take it down. So you'll see it go away for a few weeks. So I, I, would, I would suggest that if you want to see it, <coughs> relive the experience. Try to do it over the next couple of days <clears throat> because it will go down temporarily until we get the edits done. Uh, so keep that in mind. <clears throat> also, uh, we have the combined service coming up uh, in Miami, September 29th. That's going to be at Eagles Temple with uh, Brother Bernard. So uh, keep that that service in mind as well. Um, and our giving is uh, online, uh, Zelle Cash App or PayPal. Zelle is the preferred giving method sim simply because Cash App and PayPal takes fees uh, from the giving. So we ask that everyone, if you have Zelle, use that. Uh, if you need Cash App or PayPal, uh, we just ask that you email the trustees. They'll give you the information that you need to, to use Cash App or PayPal. If you want to mail something in, that's the address at the bottom of the screen. And those that are inside the sanctuary, our giving is done. We have a box in the very back of the church. As you're going out, you can use that box uh, to do your giving. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Uh, I think that's all I need to announce. So good to see uh, everybody. I see Sister Jessica back there. Amen. It's good to have her uh, in service. Uh, and don't be... I, I, I'm going to have to call a doctor, Sister Jessica, soon. Amen. But we thank God for, amen. We really, really appreciate her. And I see Sister Loon. Amen. God bless you, Sister Loon. Uh, good to have you with us tonight. And uh, Brother, um, Brother Stephen and Sister Rachel as well. We thank God, amen, to have them with us tonight. Praise the Lord. All right. So let's, uh, let's just prepare our hearts to receive uh, Brother Lee. Uh, tonight, I, I, I'm trusting that God's going to use him to drop something on purpose just for us tonight. Amen. A very uh, uh, special brother to me. And like I, like I said, he's the pastor that usually hosts when I go over to uh, Australia. We've been a couple times and, and have uh, plans to go uh, a little later this year for some meetings there as well. And, um, and, and looking forward to, you know, our time that we always enjoy ourselves. There's something about the saints in Australia. Uh, they know how to have church. And, man, they know they're not going to sit and look at you. They're going to pull on the word and, yes, amen, come on, preach it now. I mean, you're going to get all of that from Australia. So, uh, uh, but we thank God for them. So let's stand. Amen. Let's sing a course of amazing grace. Amen. As Brother Lee comes tonight. Amen. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. Let's sing it again. Oh, amen.
was lost now was blind but now I see Amen. God bless you brothers and sisters. Amen. God bless you. So good to be in the United States, and it's my first trip outside of Australia as a minister of the gospel, and it's always challenging, and it's always nervous. That's why I don't like to travel. When I see an elder or a senior that comes down under, I take full advantage of it. And, um, you know, you don't know how precious Brother Jack is. I, um, you may have your seats. Uh, I take liberty th this evening um, because how I got to know Brother Jack was through a sister that we had seen and we were just overwhelmed on her product. The prophet of God said, you let the product sell itself. And so when Brenda Lewis, mm, I was looking up on YouTube, I saw Mahalia Jackson, Rita Franklin, and then I saw this little lady. On a record cover, Brenda Lewis. Yes. Well, I hadn't heard of Brenda Lewis, so I just tapped it on, and lo and behold, I heard the song, It's Already Done, and I, I knew Cloverdale had sung that song. I knew Cloverdale. I said, nah, that's Cloverdale. So I got a little bit more no nosy, so I, I saw Jack's mom, you know, say thumbs up, click on, so I clicked on Roses. And, and from there, I saw Brother Wesco. Uh -huh. Now, Brother Wesco was in the service, and they were having some meetings, and I believe you were all there because Brother Jack was there. <laughs> and so when Brother Jack sung the song, Speak into the app, and that was my favorite song at that time, and I said, no, that can't be right. I, I'm hearing something that... You know, I'm not accustomed to because back home we grew up on, you know, the traditional yeah. gospel singers. And there's nothing wrong with them. Right. But that's how we grew up on it. Yeah. I showed Brother Mali and Brother Mali goes, you sure? I said, well, there's a tall brother and there's Brother Branham. They're a message church. <laughs> they have to be a message church. And um, so we, we, we this, and I say this, this is the only time we said, I wish. And Brother Marley and I said, mm, I wish we could have him over here. And lo and behold, Joseph Jacosi started the ball running. But Brenda Lewis put the seed in. And even beyond the grave, she put the seed in. And that's why I always encourage and I always say to our young ones, you learn from your elders. You learn the trade from the elders. Because the elders have set the path for each and every one of us. And sometimes we disrespect them because they say they're old fashioned. But Brother Brown said that's the old time Holy Spirit. And the devil won't go near it. That's why he fears it. But for us we don't fear anything of God because we are of him. So when we hear that same song and we hear that same message, we can't help but say amen to every time we hear it because it's a part of our DNA. So when we gather together as believers and understand that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, it can never change. It don't matter if you're in New Zealand. It don't matter if you're in America. It don't matter if you're in Zimbabwe. The same God is still the same. Same yesterday, today, and forever. Now that's a sister that sung a song. Singing heals. Singing protects you. We're afraid to sing because we're afraid of what might happen in our lives and might get exposed. Prophet said, you leap as high as you live. There are too many leapers that ain't living the right life. But you don't have to stay in that condition. You don't have to stay in that same place. All you need is the Holy Ghost and fire and it'll keep you alive. My 
Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, seven day week. He ain't a dead God. He's a living God. So when we heard, and Brother Chikosi, Brother Wesco came. Now we call him Papa Wesco. So that's the reason partly why we're here. Because his boy, he said, uh, he told me he isn't too well. Now they didn't give me too much information, but I don't need that. I just said, is he well? He said, he's well. And so we came and and we, that's why we're here. And the girls said, why don't we go with the concert? <laughs> Brother Jack left Australia. His last favorite words in 2019, double, double. <laughs> you know, when he said that double, double, Melbourne went down for two years under COVID. <laughs> oh, wow. uh, so... They came over and we had the concert and I'd have to say, mm, that, was, that was something. That was something. I'd like to say God bless you young men. And it's good to see you. And when I stream and sometimes I have a peeky poo and have a look at Brother Jack. And, you know, I sometimes hear how Brother Jack says, you know, when young ministers want to come, they ring them up. They want to preach here. You know how Brother Jack feels? I said, praise God, I might get under that radar. <laughs> and I got a shock when he rung me up, but I always see the young man. You know, it's going to take the young men. Amen. And, and you, you keep pressing on. It, does, it gives me joy one soul. And when Brother Jack left last year, we, we had three marriages straight after it. And you know, these were young men. Yes. Young men that, were, that weren't Christians, that don't have a family Christian background. Mm. These are three men that were born under Catholic in influence. One young man is a Chinese. Mm. But straight after the service, one of the brothers said, I need to get married. I said, wow, that, that's good. That's good. He felt a conviction. Amen. He wanted to get married. And I, and I always encourage young people, if you, you get married, don't leave it too long. So one of the first brother, he didn't take too long. He took one month. <laughs> gave me one month to prepare. Now his brother was no better. He gave me one day. Wow. And then when brother Gabriel, he gave me two weeks. So I gave a warning. I said, brothers, give me time to be able to prepare myself. So, you know, when you have a revival, yes. and the prophet God said, you need a killing to have a revival. Now, these boys had a killing. They were at the meeting. They said it was the best meetings they've ever gone to. The best meetings they've ever gone to in their whole life, and they're just young men. And straight away, the first thing they want to do is get married. And two sisters and three sisters had been there, had been waiting, and they got married. So this is the marriage. There's going to be a marriage supper of the Lamb. But you've got to be married right here. Hallelujah. Don't let no, nothing discourage you. Don't let uh, other things discourage you in getting married. Because natural types are spiritual. And when the church is married in Christ, hallelujah, she can't wait. Amen. Amen. She's under expectation that she's going to see her husband. Hallelujah. And when they get over yonder, hallelujah. And I said to the brothers in, the, in Brother West Coast Church, it's going to be the biggest and greatest youth meeting ever. We won't be old anymore. We'll be young again. Hallelujah. No more gray hair. Hallelujah. No more bald hair anymore. Sisters, you're going to have some nice long hair. Hallelujah. Amen. He's a good God. In the good time and in the bad time. He's a good God. Hallelujah. You love him tonight. Amen. Let's rise and stand before I forget to say scripture this morning. <laughs> it's good to be 
in the fellowship where you feel at home. Amen. So our trip to Australia has not been from Australia to America, has been 13 hours, but our trip here has been a blessing because for us it's, it's different. For me, I've never been outside and, and it's been a blessing, even though, you know, Florida's got their things, but the people, the saints, the cream of the crop, that's my highlight. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we certainly come to you in this precious time and knowing that everything, Lord, that you said, that you have it in order. And God, and you're a God of order. You're a God of holiness. And we thank you for the little fellowship that you have here. And we're expecting big things from you for the fellowship. And one of these days that she will have a building. Yes. That she would gather together, Lord. You've seen the sacrifices. You've seen the many blessings that the fellowship have uh, laid before others, Lord. And we thank you for the examples. We thank you for your dedication for Brother Jack, Lord. Not only is he a, a pastor, not only is he a father, a grandfather, but he's our brother in Christ, Lord. And we certainly thank you for him and opening his sacred desk for me this evening. Lord, I would rather, as my children said, they said, Daddy, we hear you all the time. We want to hear Brother Jack. And I, and I pray that, Lord, whatever I may say, May it touch someone yes. tonight, Lord. And I ask that very sincerely this evening. We pray and ask. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let us turn to our scripture to Psalms 103. All right. Glory to God. And we'll read. I was, I was going to read to 1 to 17, but I just feel to read from 1 to 3. It says here, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, forget, and forget not all his benefits, yes, who forgiveth all thy iniquities and healeth all thy diseases. Yes, you may have your seats turned to your brother and sister and say, God bless you and welcome one another again. Amen. And the scripture says here, bless the Lord, oh my soul. And I, I certainly believe that sometimes we feel like that as Brother David did, you know, to bless the Lord, oh my soul. And, his, and he's a holy God and, and we should never ever forget all his benefits that he bestows upon us. And many times we, we do forget because we, as we've had COVID for two years and one minister said we, we shouldn't be afraid of COVID. On, the thing that we should be afraid of is TB. And TB is we're too busy. Oh Amen. And, and sometimes I say to the church, don't be a CEO of a church. That's a Christmas Easter only Christian. So we should be always a believer all the time. And we, not, and we should never ever forget God's goodness and his grace and mercy that is shared upon us. And, you know, you could have had tonight, you could have had a nice peaceful night and you wouldn't have to listen to me. But you chose to come here tonight because you wanted to be in church. Right. You know, where the deer calleth unto the, hey, he's, he's calling, there's a deer calleth unto the water brooks, so my soul is calling unto thee. And, and that's our expectation daily, that God, that we should live as though he's coming right now. Hallelujah. We don't want to look to the, the future. We see the politics and certainly the whole world is looking at America. But you know, we should be looking to Israel because she is our timepiece. Hallelujah. And if she's our timepiece, hallelujah, it should put something in us tonight that we should be into battle with the devil. Hallelujah. We shouldn't make peace with the devil. We shouldn't put things in place with the devil. We should be able to say, devil, you have no preeminence. And devil, you don't have no preeminence in my life right now. Even though you may come in my family, attack my children, attack my wife, my father, or whoever it may be, but rest assured, he is my benefit. Hallelujah. He has has the resources for me. This message is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Hallelujah. He forgiveth all your iniquities. Yes. 
There is nothing that God cannot forgive right. you right now. Right. But we put doubt. We put fear. We put things in front of our Heavenly Father. But yet, He's done everything for us. Right. Amen. Yes. We know that the Lord executes righteous and judgment. Yes, but God is also merciful. God is also gracious. Yes. God is also slow to anger. Yes. Amen. That's right. And he's plenteous in mercy. Amen. He's plenteous in mercy. Hallelujah. We're not asking for judgment. We're asking for mercy. Yes. We're asking mercy for my child, for my backslidden children. We're asking God, the God of the impossible, right now. And the Lord is merciful Amen. for those that seek him. Yes. you got to be seeking. That's right. You can't rely on Brother Jack all the time. That's right. Amen. Ooh. That's right. We say amen. amen. you got to do your homework. Yeah. you got to get the after preacher. Yeah. The after preacher after the main, after Brother Jack's preach, the main preacher comes on. Yeah. My God. Yeah. You go home and study your word. Study your inheritance. See who you really are. Amen. Amen. Uh, you know, we all drive vehicles. We all got cars. You know, Prophet of God said that there's a dynamic. Amen. There's the mechanics and the dynamic. Yes, sir. And many times he says you need the gasoline to turn on the car. Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. Amen. You got the wheels that have to function. You got the engine got to function. Right. You got the gearbox to function. Right. But then that inner place where there's that holies of holies, right. where's that sanctuary, you got a battery, and that battery needs a negative and a positive. You can't separate them. Doesn't matter how much gasoline you got, if you got the key, but if you don't have the spark, that's caused by the battery. Battery's got a positive. Right. That's right. Battery's got a negative. Right. You got to put them together. Amen. You can't separate them. Amen. When you have problems, rejoice. Hallelujah. See what the Lord can do. Yes. When things go wrong, rejoice. Yes. Praise God. We don't want to rejoice. Oh my. We want people to feel how. Heartbreak. Come on. We're human. Amen. There's a season. Right. There's a time. But there's a blessing. Amen. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, Amen. for they shall be filled. Amen. Not a if, not a but, not a maybe. He's a all all God. All right. Amen. He's not part time, half time. Amen. There's no time out in this game, brothers and sisters. It's all the way. Amen. Amen. David expresses the blessings of the Lord who is able. Amen. Who is able? The one that dwells within you. Amen. The one that's inside of you. All right. The one that always tells you to do the right. right. And when you would rather do the wrong in the easy way, oh he's the one that's in that in the century. He's got your negative. He's got your positive. I know you don't want the negative, but brothers and sisters, to get the car moving, you need a positive and a negative, and they have to be connected. In that secret place, He is your hiding place. That's where He dwells, brothers and sisters. And He's there to bless. The Bible says, Blessed. Are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom Amen. of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Is he a comforter? Amen. Amen. He comforts you. Hallelujah. Rest assured, we're comforted that God at this moment and this time, that God has got Brother Wesco in his hands. Hallelujah. We don't have to worry. We don't have to fret. We have to say, Lord, make me stand in that position that thy brother has stood for me. Hallelujah. We went to the fellowship. We sat in the church. 
I said to the church brothers and sisters, if I don't get to see Brother Wesco, this is the next best thing. Seeing the reflection of the body. Seeing the examples of the body. Hallelujah. I know Brother Wesco may not be able, but there are ones that are able. There are ones that are able to take the fire. There are ones that are there that are going to lay the path for the younger ones. Don't put it under a bushel. Let your light shine. Don't, don't say, oh, I don't want to show this to my friends at work. A question was asked me. A question was asked me when I was working. I was a Christian, young Christian, young family. And a young man came up to me and he said, Lee, the reason why you go to church, because you don't want to drink. You don't want to go smoking. You only go to church because that's your protection. We can, we can say that, yeah. 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 I like that. Be honest. Hey, Amen. I said, no. Said, Come on. Come on. The only reason why you're not like the way you are because you go to church. And if you don't go to church, you'll fall just like me. I said, no. No. He said, I, do the, I don't do these things because I go to church, but you should. You should keep it standing. You should live holy. You should live righteous. You don't come to church to be a disgrace. You come to church to be a light. So somebody else can say, I'm one of them. I say to him, no, nope. I go to church, I praise my God, and I don't do all these things because I choose not to do That's it. That's right. That's right. You've got the right. Probably God said, you have a choice. You're on free moral agency. But it's a dog you feed. It's the one you feed the most will bring the result. And Brother Brown said, when you create an atmosphere, when you get on your knees to pray, Amen. that brings results. Amen. You got to be desperate. Amen. Who loves being desperate? God. Amen. Who loves free benefits? Amen. Oh, hallelujah. I'm one of them. Amen. I'm one of them. Hallelujah. I'm one of them, brothers and sisters. I was saying to the church on Sunday, Brother Jack, we were traveling with my, my daughter. And you know baggage. You remember when you came? You had to unload. You had to unload your bag, put everything in your jacket, to right. ease up the load in his baggage. That's Australia. Yeah, Amen? Amen. Yeah. So they come through, and while we were about to hop on the plane, they brought the, the way, and they stood in front of our terminal, and they were weighing everybody's baggage. And I said to Claudia, Claudia, what's my baggage? Is it 10 kg? She said, no, Dad, it's 7. I said, I'm pretty sure you said 10. You know, sometimes you go deaf. <laughs> so we're the last ones on the plane because we're the first front seats. And I said, Claudia, you know where I get my finances. I don't justify by using my finance because I made a mistake. I'm being honest. Because right God sees how you spend your finances. Oh, yes. Amen. He's the bookkeeper. Oh, Amen. The book of book, the rock of ages. The Bible means basic instruction before you leave earth. So I said to Claudia, and I said, Claudia, come on. She said, don't worry, Dad. And I preach it every Sunday. Don't worry. Don't doubt. God is rich in mercy, and here I am. <clears throat> so they come up, and every person that was coming through was getting checked. And the airline said, you have to pay. And I said, so we came through. So they checked my bag, and it's supposed to be 7 kg. Mine came at 9.7. And I went... And Claudia was pretty good. She came at nine, uh, 7.4. Then the lady said, take your bag off. Weighed that as well. That ended up to 8.4. So we were both overweight. 
Brother Jack, you're boarding your plane and all these things are coming through your mind. But you know, there was one thing that did come into my mind. And that's why I say about listen to elders. <laughs> Brother Kydra Diggs, he brought a message. He says he's sometimes impatient when he's at the, the plane terminal and sometimes he kind of fusses with them because they haven't done it quickly enough. And then he said, maybe God wants me to go in first class, but because I'm too busy fussing with them. Come on, brother. You see, I, I remembered that. And straight away, she gets her notebook or her, her calculator because she's, she's booked everyone. Brothers and sisters, seeing everybody pulling out their wallets and pulling out their credit cards. and Man, I was getting, oh. But at that point... At that very moment, my mind went totally blank. Totally blank, Brother Jack. I wasn't going to fight it. I wasn't going to justify it. I wasn't going to fight for my rights. My rights. So I just stayed there. Now she got her calculator. And remember, church, she has booked every person that's come on that's overweight. So she gets her calculator and she starts going through it. She looks at me. She pushes it again. She looks at me again. Now she's moving a little bit uncomfortable. And while she's trying to get onto line, she turns to me, sir, I think we have a glitch. Brothers and sisters, he is the great I am. He's the great I am. I've got a glitch I can't get through. Brothers and sisters, I said, what? I was inside like a big baby, but I was a man like this. But inside I was going, oh, praise God, hallelujah, I'm your son, and you've never left me, you've never forsaken me. In a time of need, I receive your benefits. He gives you benefits. And then she says to me, you can go in, sir. And we're walking in like this, Brother Jack, and Claudia turned around, see, Dad? He's rich in mercy. We don't want judgment. We want mercy. Mercy rewrote my life. Hallelujah. He's given us a way. And we got to tap into Brother Wesco. He had preached it. Tap into those resources. 224, that same message still applies right now. Don't go back and say, well, Brother Wesco said that, Brother Jack said that. I can't believe what they say. My God. Try them. Amen. Test them. Amen. Confess. Amen. Speak into the atmosphere. Amen. We don't confess enough. Because exactly right. when we confess, we rejoice. Amen. We rejoice. We come to church rejoicing. We come rejoice saying, Lord, thank you for everything that you've done for me. Hallelujah. Is he rich in mercy? Yes, he is. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Sometimes when, a, somebody, when we say we want true love, real love, God's going to test you on that love. He's going to test you if the benefits are working. Amen. Like I say, he's the book officer. Amen. He comes and checks up. If you're merciful when somebody steps on your foot. My, my, my. Florida. Miami. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm talking about. No indicating. Cutting three lanes across. Oh, and if you're too slow, beep, beep. Yes, brother. Brothers and sisters, that made me feel at home because Australia is exactly the same. 
Hallelujah. The same devil that's here is the same devil in Australia. But I'm blessed and assured Jesus is mine because I know the same Jesus is here is the same Jesus in New, in New Zealand and Australia. Amen. Glory. Amen. So if you want mercy, you have to be merciful. Just test yourself. Your children are the best examples of testing your your character. That's why I always say to young people, you enjoy your single life. You do have some responsibilities. You do have certain things that you have to be responsible. Giving to God 100%. But when you become married and you have children, that's when the challenges start. Amen. And sometimes God's got to put you through things that you don't want to go through. But God's got to have a perfect bride. He's got to have a perfect bride without spot or wrinkle. So we come into the understanding that David would pour out his heart. He would say, you are my hiding place. He's got to be the hiding place. says here, I've heard in Matthew, it says, you've heard that it had been said, thou shalt love thy neighbor, hate thy enemy, but I say unto you, love your enemies. Amen. 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 Bless them Amen. that curse you. Amen. That's hard. Amen. When somebody is giving you a one finger salute on the freeway, brothers, what do we do? Do we turn the cheek? Or do we chase up and say, I want to have a talk with him? <laughs> or do we say, God bless you? All right, now. All right. They may do one, we do five. All right. That's grace. Hallelujah. The more you do it, the better you become. Hallelujah. Because the devil knows that when you go to service like tonight, I apologize for being late. We were just on time, just. Then we went to the petrol station. Petrol's pump didn't work on this pump. Went to the other pump. It was difficult working the pumps. My God. And two weeks ago I said to the church, when you're, when you're wanting to come to church and you're so blessed during the week, you're so calm, he puts the slowest driver in front of you. And when you pass him, there's another one. There's another one. There's another one. Praise God. That was just like that tonight. I didn't know how many people were slow drivers, but they were slow. But I said to the church, God is working his patience in you and I. So he's got to use somebody for you to overcome. He's going to use your brother and sister. They might step on your toe and say, hmm, I ain't coming back to church. He stepped on my toe. The prophet of God said the church is your protection. He says when you come to church, that's your protection. Now, Brother Benham also says, church don't save you, but if there's something inside of you, you can't wait for the doors to open. That's what he's talking about. He's talking about that inner man that dwells within you. You can't help but come to church. You can't help but praise God. You can't help but lift your mouth and say, Lord, I'm dead to the world. And as soon as you walk out that door, the devil's going to say, okay, I'm going to prove it. He tries the brothers first. Yeah. As soon as the brothers all go out, he's going to cut you off. He's going to put people in front of you. He's going to rob your joy. And when he robs your joy, your wife can't even make you happy anymore. Come on. That's how the devil works. He, he, uh, he only knows one thing. He knows how to bring heartache. He knows how to bring pain. But when there is pain and heart, there's joy in the morning. There's joy in the morning. It's easy to love those that love you. But when those that hate you, and you might say that, Brother Lee, how do you know? In the last 50 minutes, I'm going to say this. This is a personal testimony. You say to me, how do I know? There's a young man in our church. This young man, he'd come to a camp in Florida in 2018. He was with a Pentecostal girl. They were just friends since the age of 14. There was another sister in the church by the name of Naomi. Now, she liked this young man, 
But this young man, when he was trying to make his acquaintance, people around him would say discouraging things. She's not, he's not your type. He's too chubby. You can get somebody better. I said to the young sisters, if you have a Holy Ghost filled man, that's good enough for you. Don't matter what he looks like. He'll look after you. He'll pray for you. But don't discourage anything that may be happening because there might be something that God ordains. And you might put your foot in it and draw some conclusion. So 2018, they come to camp. Brother Jack meets this young man. This girl is ringing him up in Australia. She's complaining to him, where are you? I'm at a church camp. No, you're not. He's one foot in the camp, one foot on the out. That's what happens when you compromise. Now he tells the Lord, when I go back, Lord, if we break up, Lord, I know it's the will of God. He had enough sense to say that. Enough sense to say that. So he comes back from 2018 from camp. They break up. They break up. And when they break up, he's, he's heartbroken. It's his first love. So he breaks up with her. But he's still friends. Now, you know, the worldly girls, you know, worldly girls, they probably discard him, but they still want to keep him communication. So she keeps her, oh, how are you? I'm so sad how we, I got a new boyfriend. <clears throat> but uh, he's not really new. We've been dating for over a year. Uh, and your mind goes, whoa. You see, that's what the world does to believers. They manipulate them. They try to strip them of every integrity they have as a human being. But it can happen in the church. So the church can also be guilty of the same thing. But God knows the beginning from the end, brothers and sisters. He knows what's good for you. Even though sometimes you may feel, oh, I don't feel it, Lord. But that's your benefits, God. So what happens, and I'll cut the story short, because it drives a situation has driven him back into his, her arms. And that's the personal bit. Now you may ask, what happened? People weren't happy with just being friends. I understand that. But when he's a 24-year-old, he's an adult. He's no longer a child. He's an adult. He has a right to make his decisions. As much as we love to beat our children or smank, Oh, discipline. Come on. We like to keep them here. But they end up being there. Sister Branham said that to Brother Branham. When Rebecca wanted to play some boogie woogie blues. And she slammed the door. And, she, and what did Sister Branham say? She needs a whooping. Some of the mothers would have said that too. But Brother Branham knew that he wasn't fighting against flesh and blood. He was fighting against demon spirits. Amen. God knows what's best for you. So he goes back into a situation that he, the Lord told him. Remember what I said? He, he made a promise. God hears the promise. Brother Jack counseled me on this bit. He said, you know, Brother Lee, he has been given a chance and God had broken it up. Now he's going back to the fire. He will have to deal with God. It's a, what is it in the Bible that says? It's a horrible thing to be in the hand of an angry God. So he goes back. But she's still got a boyfriend. He's just a friend. Don't you hate that young man? I like you as a brother. But I don't like you as a boyfriend. Come on. 
I, I, I'm saying something that's really personal here. So on Easter 2020, he gets a phone call from this Pentecostal girl who they have been staying in the same house. Remember what you said, Brother Jack? He will have to deal with God. That's the, co that's, a, the, uh, that's, the, that's the trouble with young people. When God gives you a clear direction, you refuse to listen to God. And we ask God, he's rich in mercy. But when mercy's there, we want judgment. When God, when Brother Ram said, we fight our way to hell. When God has given us mercy. So he goes back. He gets a message. He's heartbroken, Brother Jack. And this is the reason why I wanted to come and talk about this particular subject to Brother Jack. Because Brother Jack was a, was a part of that 2018. When this young boy met Brother Jack, he was starstruck. <laughs> you have a proud you have a sister. You should be proud of your son. When young men can get starstruck. And he said, he said, you know, when I saw Jack, brother Jack, I was lost for words. I said, that's good. That's good enough for me. <clears throat> so when Jack gave me the counsel, and I knew what I was up against. So in Easter of 2020, just before, is it 2022? What year was it, honey? 21. He goes and he makes a, a nuisance of himself. He goes on Facebook and he writes a message on Facebook. He said, Mom, Dad, I'm sorry that I'm not the son that you want me to be. His, father's, his grandfather is a pastor. His grandfather is a deacon. So he has a good platform. But brothers and sisters, it doesn't matter if you've been in the message 30, 40 years until you have a personal experience, then it's just another church. It's just another fellowship. So at this point, he takes off, and then the message is relayed to the family that he's going to do something fairly stupid. Because at the end of his message, he says, I just want to sleep. I've wasted my life. See, when we realize when it's all is said and done, when we come to the end of it, what really matters is Jesus Christ. Amen. That's what really matters. And he came to the realization that since the age of 14, now he's 24, he's 10 years, he's wasted all his life, and he just wants to end it. So the mother, when she receives the message, as you all mothers know, that's something that you cannot bear, your firstborn. Your firstborn, the love of your life, the firstborn. And you try to get somebody to try to talk you out of his wrongs, that, that ain't going to work. Because mothers know beneath the heart lies a little child. So she's crying and wailing. And then the husband turns, you know, the husband doesn't know what to say. But the only thing he can say, the Lord giveth, the Lord taketh. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Because you never know in a situation, because now he's in God's hands. And if he's elected seed, if either he repents, either he comes back to Christ with repentance, if he doesn't, and resists it, God will take him off. So there's no other comfort but by, by Jesus Christ. So he, re he relays it, she cries, she hollers. There's nothing she can do. They're traveling three hours to go see him. They get to his destination, Brother Jack. He's nowhere to be found. So he, they ring the police officers. The police officers, there's nothing they can do after 72 hours. Unless, we, unless they sign a, a document of insanity. But he said he's not insane. But while this is all happening... It's an uncertain battle because you just don't know which way it's going to go. But that is, the, that is the most sweetest time when you can go to your Heavenly Father. That's the time you can say, Lord, 
I've proved you in the small things. This is a giant. If you can be with David, you can be with this young man. But you just got to keep swinging it. And you got to let it loose, brothers and sisters. It's no good going around the same message over and over and over again. You got to let it loose. You got to let the word work. When it works, it's by faith. And so when they had it going and they pinged them off, you know how police, they can, they can find you when you think you can run away from them. They hide in places where you don't think they're hiding. They give you tickets where you least expect it. But they just have a way of finding somebody. So they said, we don't know where he is. He said, give me his cell number. I'll text. You know, police detectives. He's answering. They ping him off the towers. They find his position. Now this young man, when he was young, now he's in a weight of 160 kgs. Depression weight. He goes out of this vehicle, Brother Jack, and while he's going out in this vehicle, he puts a rope around his head. That was a blessing in disguise. Because sisters, he broke the branch. <laughs> At the time, he, he didn't tell us, but when he had calmed down, he told us, yeah, I broke the branch. <laughs> so he ends up going back to the car, and he's sitting in the front seat with a knife in his lap. And at that moment, the police turn up. God will use the authorities for you. Amen. Amen. Like I said, there's a glitch. There's a glitch. So when he came back, they escorted him to the, 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 the hospital, Brother Jack. They got him there and they, he didn't want to go home. Brother Jack, he said, I ain't going home. The police said, yes, you are. He was forced back home. Literally. And I tell you, you know when the child has had some things from the world, they pick up bad habits. Bad habits, Brother Jack. And you want to do the Holy Ghost and fire thing. That's what one pastor said to me. He said, Brother, I know you want to do the quick way. But you got to let God do it. You got to let God do it. And sometimes he would be in the back room and we would, we would preach on Sunday, Brother Jack. You may run, but you cannot hide. Amen. If you're an elected seat, God will work on you. Yeah. God will strip you. God will bring you to the end of yourself because his word said so. Amen. Hallelujah. So he comes to a place. I'm winding it up now, Brother Jack. And I'm winding it up. He comes to a place, brothers and sisters, He's coming to church. He's sitting in church. That's all he's doing. He's sitting in church. You know, some people do sit like that in church. They do sit like that in church. But the spirit of prayer, one day, there's going to be a change. One day in the atmosphere, there's going to be a change. He used to come to choir practice. Brother Evans would have choir practice. He would call the young man up and he would go. You see, this young man can sing. He'd been singing in the church since the age of four. He'd sung in front of many, many great pastors that have come through. But it doesn't matter unless you have a personal experience. You can be naturally gifted, but if you don't let that gift under God's hands... So he sits there and a the sister taps him on the shoulder, sister. He comes up to him and says, Michael, that's his name. The Lord told me you got to sing this Sunday. You sing on this Sunday. And he looks, he comes back, and that person is my son. He comes back home, he says, Daddy, I can't sing at church. I said, why, son? He said, I got unholy hands. I said, make them holy. Get him back into church. He said, I can't do that, Dad. I said, son, 
If God told me to do something, I would do it. But dad, I said, don't but me. If God told me, and brother, he didn't want to sing. He didn't feel like singing. But he got up and sung, and he sung the prodigal son song. What happened next? The ministry, the preaching, the washing of the word. Did the work. It did the work. Not only did he come up to the front that Sunday that he sung. Came up and gave his heart to the Lord. He repented and he's never been the same. Brothers and sisters. He said, I wish I'd learned earlier. I wish I'd, do you know, Dad? I, I, I wish I'd seen Jack. I seen, I wish I'd seen. He, I said, you've done a lot of wishing. <laughs> he said, I know I should have gone to the convent and seen Brother Jack. Now I feel so bad. I don't want to see him. But he did. Yeah. He did. And not only that, brothers and sisters, Michael gave his heart back to the Lord. And the sister that I spoke about, the benefits since 2011, Sister Naomi, it struck him. Should have seen him, Brother Jackie. She was singing, uh, what was the song? At the Cross. She was just singing, singing at the cross. And me and the mother were going, oh, 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 look at him, look at him. <laughs> if you're a son and daughter of God, God don't hate you. God loves you. That's why he's got benefits for you. That's why he's got his mercies and grace for you. So sisters, his jaw was way down here. And he got starstruck. And Sister Naomi kept singing and he just kept looking. He comes to his mother and I and says to me and her and says, Dad, don't tell anybody. I said, I won't. You know me. I keep my mouth quiet. I wanted to share it with Brother Jack because he's been a part of my family. Sister, the counsel that he gave me held me. You should be proud of your pastor. Amen. Amen. And so Michael comes home, says, something happened, something struck me, Dad. I don't know what it is. It's a funny feeling. I'm afraid. Whereas once he used to be very confident. Now when something starts to work in your life, you start to become humble. You're not so quick to lose your temper. You're always asking God first. Amen. So I keep it quiet. Because I know scripture, it's a, he's in a, a sweet, small, still voice. But mom, oh my, I gotta tell sister, I gotta tell somebody. Sisters, yep, she went and told some sisters, and Michael got wind of it, and he went, mm. and he, and you know, because he, he said he was afraid, because he was looking at his life, and he was saying to me, would she forgive me for everything that I've done? If you know Naomi, she came to my, uh, over here, she came here, she was polite, she was sisterly to the girl that he was with, not once was she jealous but yet, that was her future husband. Man, I, I tip my hat to her. And Michael goes, I know, Dad, I'm sorry. I'm, I, for, I, I wish I never said those things. So, he, so he, he's, he's nervous. And Brother Jack comes to our meetings, preaches beautifully. You know, he's sitting it out of the park and just whacking it out. And I'm just going, <laughs> pew. And he said, pew. Just like he did on, on, the, on the concert. Man, I, I say to the church at Brother West, I say, wow, that's all I had to say. So he's hitting it out, and he's so happy. But you know what happens in conventions? There are other boys that turn up. God is rich in mercy. Other boys are hanging around Sister Naomi. 
Naomi is a very friendly sister. She's not flirty. She's very friendly. She's shaking their hands and Michael's on the other side looking. <laughs> After the convention, he said, Dad, I'm going to ask Brother Molly. I said, oh, 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 what happened before? He said, I know, but I saw all the boys. <laughs> and I like to say in finishing here, we have free moral agencies. Can we say amen? amen. I want to say a quote here. Let us, and before I finish, people say, I, I can stay at home, be just a good Christian as I can be at church. You can't. The Bible says, not forsaking our assembly of ourselves together, that much more as we see the time coming. We need each other. Brothers and sisters, without the prayers of the, your fellowship, Brother Wesco, Brother, uh, um, Brother, um, no, um, Israel Poe, they were there at our meetings. A lot of people had prayed for Michael because when he came to Florida, he really enjoyed himself because he was around the believers. And so what happened, he shifted into gear, Brother Jack. And now, on October 26, he's, he's going to be married to Sister Naomi. Naomi means pleasant. Michael means gift of God. And to us, it's a pleasant gift of God. Amen. Brother Branham said, if you're a Christian, you long to go where other Christians are. That's in the message of thirsting for life in closing. The fellowship with other Christians. So you cannot stay away from church. You see, he could have stayed home, but he couldn't. There's a deep call to the deep. And if there's a, call, a deep calling, there's got to be a response. Amen. You can't do it because it's, he says here, I'm hungry, but I'll never go to the table. I'll never, I'll, I'll never eat. I'll just keep going to it. You've got to go and feed on the word of God. Amen. Amen. When you feed, you push out. Amen. When you drink, you push out. Now, can you, tell, can you say, do I know this message works? I know it works firsthand. I know it works. My son said to me many, many months after everything had died down, he said, Dad, I know not to kill myself. I know that because the Bible says it, and Brother Branham also gives us that blessed assurance. But, Dad, I just wanted the pain to go. He's our prison help in time of need. He's our hiding place. And that's why I encourage church, if you're struggling, just remember one thing. He never fails. He abides with us. And thank you so much tonight. Thank you so much, Brother Jack, and for us being here. And, you know, I, I've certainly been a privilege to be here. And just to share this little testimony as well as a little of encouragement. What, Brother Jack and Brother Wesco? You know, Brother Wesco, he took the children to, to Disney World. He drove them up to Disney World. I tell you, when he brought them in the house, the children go, man, it's a mansion. This is so flash. Michael loved it. When Michael was a little bit short of cash, Brother Wesco was there. And so the first thing that Brother Michael said to me, how's Brother Wesco? I said, he's good. You just keep praying for him. So this October, we're going back to do a wedding for Michael. And this is why we came to share that testimony. But most of all, to encourage, he's still the same God. Same God that parted the Red Sea. He's still the same God right now. Hallelujah. Whatever your need, whatever the problem, there is nothing too hard for our Lord. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Appreciate Brother Lee on tonight. Um, I was, uh, I, I knew a portion of his testimony 
and, uh, and knowing the family and just remembering back in 2018 when we first met the saints from Australia, they came here to Brother West Coast services and everybody's trying to figure out who them people on the second row, them sisters that is just so on fire. And uh, a couple of brothers showed up and I believe Mike was playing the guitar, you know, and, and, and everything. But um, I knew that um, uh, when I went to uh, Australia and he wasn't serving the Lord at the time and was just trying to encourage the pastor. Um, you know, you just, you, you say things, but you know, you're going through yourself <laughs> while, while you're trying to encourage somebody else. And, uh, but when I, when I see how, uh, the season change, and and, you, and and if you all don't know Sister Naomi, once you meet her, you'll never forget her. Right. When she shake your hand, <laughs> when Sister Naomi shake your hand, I, she she give you a good handshake. And uh, but but you know, uh, precious saints that are just. I mean, there's so much encouragement that we can get from there, and, and I, I love this because uh, even though Brother Michael went through this season in his life. When he comes back and he surrenders everything to the Lord, the scripture applies, forget not all his benefits. There are benefits in serving God. There are benefits. And, and, and the first thing God wants from us is, is just a, a surrendered and dedicated life. Uh, because, see, in, in, unless you're dedicated to God, it's going to be hard for you to be dedicated to a spouse. Yeah. Right? right? Uh, whether that's husband or wife, you have to be dedicated to God first before you can actually, you know, be able to serve somebody else. So, uh, but there, there, there's so much, even, you know, uh, the spirit of suicide has been busted here tonight. Amen. Um, just uh, the love of God, <clears throat> where everybody was telling you know, the sister, he's too heavy, you know, and you don't want a guy like that. He, well, the heaviness is what saved his life. Amen. So God, God specifically designed him yeah. with the weight that he had because God knew he was going to go through a trial. And then when he started going through that trial, he, he didn't want to tell nobody, but I broke the branch. And for us, we say, praise God, you broke the branch. Because had you not broke the branch, it would be a different story. Right? But the, the very thing that he was criticized over is the thing that saved his life. There's a lot said here tonight. There's a lot said here tonight. And, and, and as Brother... Um, Lee was sharing when when Michael came back to church and he wasn't just he still wasn't there like he showed you how he was sitting down but when the sister walked up to him in church and said the Lord told me that you are supposed to sing the prodigal son this this week this Sunday and he said he looked at that with the life he was living saying ain't no way the Lord told you that and I went home said no I got and he tried to get get out of it by telling his daddy you know, that, you know, that I, I got unclean hands. I'm not supposed to get, because unclean hands don't supposed to be doing nothing, right? But, uh, but the Lord said it. Yeah. And uh, he still was trying to get out of it. And when he, um, when he finally got up there and did it, it caused him to break. And, and I, I remember um, uh, my brother used to say that when he, would, when he wasn't serving the Lord and he would come into the house of the Lord, it was, he said, the devil would fight him. Don't you lift your hand in this atmosphere. Don't, right. li don't lift your hand in this atmosphere. Right. And he would sit there just fighting to keep that hand down. Right. No, I ain't going to. No, I'm not going to enter yeah. in. And the music just, just moving all on the right. inside. But like, no, no, I cannot enter right. in. I got to be tough in an environment right. like this. Before you know it, uh, just to. Uh, and sometimes you get it down here like this, you know, just, just a little bit, and nobody can see it, but God see it. And before you know it, it's, it's all the way up. And, and whatever that devil was that was trying to keep you from praising your God, that devil just has to loose you and let you go. And he said, just something about getting into that atmosphere. And oh, my God. 
Thank God. I'm, I'm so happy to hear this, this beautiful testimony. I was, you know, one, one of the uh, beautiful things from the weekend is that uh, my son-in-law and my daughter were there on, um, on Saturday night, and my son-in-law was absolutely blessed. Uh, yeah, he was blessed, and, and since he won a little drawing, they, they caught him on camera with a little shout. And so he gonna go all over the world. It's recorded. You know, and, and if God on judgment, they have to play it back. Remember what you was doing? That shout, you know. But, but I just believe that was the beginning of something that God is getting ready to do. Amen in my, in my family. And I see what God has done in Brother Lee family. I'm claiming it for my family. And if you got somebody in your family you want to claim, don't let tonight just go by. Claim it. Claim it. Amen. It, 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 it's yours. Speak into the atmosphere and lay claims on the promise that God gave you. Glory to God. Yeah, I believe lives were changed this weekend. A, a, a worship service, and and just one, and, and I just brother brother Israel, I could, I can't say enough. When you see your name in the book, Amen. what what it will do for you, and I think there were some people that began to see their name in the book. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We thank the Lord. Let's have a word of prayer. Amen. Uh, before we would just depart tonight. Father, we thank you for just allowing your servant to pass this way. God, the, the beautiful a thought on well, just not forgetting the benefits, and, and it pays to serve you. We realize that. And God, how um, this testimony of his uh, son getting married to a precious sister that's just been holding on. Right. Um, I just I pray, I pray it gives strength and encouragement to the others that are holding on, holding their testimony high, just waiting for you, Lord, to send uh, the right brother, or the right brother could be present, but for him to recognize uh, what you have placed in his path, Lord, and just even listening to the testimony, how uh, at a meeting he the the he began to recognize there's some other brothers around here. <laughs> And he had to make some decisions. God, I believe there, there are other young men. We heard that even at the banquet. It's time, Lord, that many of them can make these decisions. And, and that they could, Lord, uh, not be afraid to take that next step in life. You will meet them. You will, you will, you will show them to, that you are a provider. Amen. That uh, you, you know how to meet needs. Uh, that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And maybe they, they haven't experienced you in that manner, but they can if they're willing to just let go. So, Lord, I just pray that you would just continue to strengthen all our youth. And, Lord, uh, that you would just bless them. Uh, our sisters, bless them for their, their stance. Lord, and uh, just, just keep them, God, as our prayer. And trust, oh God, that you would uh, give traveling mercies to the saints as they prepare to return home on yes. tomorrow. Uh, go before them. Thank you for your favor. <laughs> uh, when, the, when the luggage was overweight, yeah. God, you provided. Amen. You, you just, you, you're concerned about every Amen. detail yes. of our life. Oh. You are an awesome God, a mighty God. And God, we could never, never thank you enough. So we pray for your divine yes, uh, mercy, Lord, as they travel. Uh, many of the other saints, oh God, as they leave this place, we ask that you would bless them and keep them until we're able to return back again on Sunday. And may the spirit of God just meet us in a very, very special way. God, it's our prayer. It's in Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. 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 <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. So I, I know typically we would have um, uh, the floor open for uh, testimonies and uh, things of that nature. And I know there's a lot of testimonies from uh, the weekend. But tonight I wanted to give uh, Brother Lee just a time to 
uh, share, you know, his heart with us and, and we'll be holding to this. And, and I was specifically praying that he would get into that testimony because I knew it would do good tonight. So uh, so we were just wanting to give that space to him. And you all hold your testimonies. Amen. We'll be back next Wednesday and we'll be looking forward to hearing, amen, all that the Lord has done. Amen. amen. God, God is good. God is good. Amen. We'll have um, the brothers come at this time uh, to dismiss us. The Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. Until we meet again. God bless you.